Interest rates have surged recently, and one of the positive aspects of that is that you can now earn a much higher income while taking little risk. Now, one approach to generating an income is to build a bond ladder. So in this video, we look at what a bond ladder is and how to build and maintain one. Now, don't forget, if you do enjoy our content, then do subscribe to our channel. That way you won't miss any new videos. So let's look at building a bond ladder for passive income in a bit more detail. So why build a bond ladder in the first place? Well, one reason is to generate a very safe income. Another thing that people like about bond ladders is that they tell you exactly when you're going to receive money and exactly how much you'll receive. So they are very predictable. And that can help a lot with things like planning your retirement, say. One typical use case might be just before retirement when you want to reduce the risk of your portfolio to avoid something called sequencing risk because you're very sensitive to a drawdown early on in retirement. So what you do is sell a little bit of your equity and move it into one of these structures. So why not just put money into a deposit account? Well, if you've already got money inside an ISA or a SIP, you may not have access to something which can generate a reasonable income. Money market funds are usually ultra safe and generate very little income. So this might be a way of generating a higher level of income while still keeping the money safe inside one of these tax shelters. Another use case might be if you've got a known large expense at some known time in the future. What you can do is make the bond ladder pay out precisely the right amount at precisely the right time. Of course, these are events which you know the timing of, but it is useful for that kind of planning. Now, a bond ladder is usually constructed with government bonds, so it's worth just briefly describing how these work. In this video, I'll be referring to GILTS. Those are UK government bonds. They're called GILTS because they used to have a gilt edge around them to show how fabulous they were and how low the credit risk was from lending money to the UK government. If we're talking about US government bonds, they're usually referred to as US treasuries. Now, if you are based in the US, then you can buy government bonds directly from the government using something called Treasury Direct. We don't have a comparable system here in the UK, unfortunately, so you just have to go via your broker. So check that your broker does offer government bonds. You might have to buy them over the phone, which is very 70s, but people tell me that that's quite easy to do. So this is what the lifetime of a government bond looks like. It's got an issue date. Think of that as like its birthday. And the price of the bond when it's created on its issue date is 100. So if you buy on that date, you've got this big red negative cash flow because you pay 100 to buy the bond. Then during the course of the life of the bond, you earn a regular interest payment called the coupon. Now, in this case, the coupon is 5%. So on your £100 investment, you'll earn £5 a year. And then what sets bonds apart from equity, say, is that they have a lifetime. And when the lifetime ends, you get your money back. So on the maturity date, as it's called, you get your £100 back and you'd also get your last £5 coupon. Now, the convention for UK gilts is not to receive one £5 payment per year. The way it works is you get a semi-annual coupon. So instead of £5 a year, you receive £2.50 every six months. You get the same income, you just get more frequent payments. But don't be confused by the fact that the coupon is 5%, but your payments look like they're 2.5%. That's just the convention for UK government bonds. So a bond ladder is built out of government bonds, but what is the bond ladder itself? Well, it's just a portfolio of government bonds. However, what you do is to space out the maturity dates to occur at regular intervals. So for example, these might be every year. And what people usually do is never sell their bonds. In other words, they hold them until they mature. And that's got very important consequences, as we'll see in a moment. Now, why would you be thinking about a bond ladder right now? Well, the rough income you'll receive from the bond ladder is based on the yield of the bonds which go into it. And if we plot that yield over time, you can see that we've had a very long period of time when yields were very low. And this meant that the income on a bond ladder would have been very low indeed. However, over the course of 2022, particularly in the UK, we've seen yields spike almost to 4.5%. So here I've shown the yield for one year UK government bonds and also for 10 year government bonds. Now, although those yields have fallen back somewhat, it's still now much more attractive 
than it was at the beginning of the year. Now, many of the people in the pension craft community locked in these really high yields that we saw during that spike after the mini budget we got in the UK. And they could only do that because they bought single bonds. So you can be tactical with your bond purchases inside the bond ladder and that way lock in high yields if they do spike. Now here's a word you'll seldom hear me say when it comes to investing and it's certainty. Now I mentioned a point about locking in a rate of return. How can you be certain you can do that with a government bond? You certainly can't do it with equity. Well to understand that you have to understand how bond pricing works. So beside me here you can see a bond which will mature in 2023. It was actually issued in 2013, that was when it was born, and you can see what happened to its price. Now, on the day of its birth, it was issued at £100. The price then fell to under £95, then it surged up to over £110. But notice what's happened recently is that the line's got less wiggly, it's less volatile as it approaches maturity. Also, the price is being pulled back to 100. Now, when a bond matures, a government bond, you can guarantee that it'll be worth precisely 100 because that's how much face value you'll be receiving back. Remember that big cash flow at maturity. Now, this pull to par effect is guaranteed. You know you're going to receive 100 on the maturity date. So that's the first brick in our certainty wall with government bonds. Here's another government bond which matures in about eight and a half years time. This too was issued at a price of 100. Its price rapidly fell and that fall accelerated over the course of this year. It has bounced back somewhat, but it's now trading at about 78 pounds. Now what I've done is I've plotted this dot here on the maturity date of the bond. We know for a fact that this thing will mature at a price of 100 in 2031. In other words, if you buy the bond today, you're going to lock in that capital gain, and that's a certainty. But that's only true if you hold the bond to maturity. You don't have to sell it ever again. You can just wait until 2031 and receive your £100 back, and also receive the guaranteed capital gain. Plus, you earn any income which the bond generates, which in this case is absolutely tiny. It's just 0.25%. So this is what the cash flows look like if you buy that bond today. There's a big negative red cash flow because that's how much you pay for the bond. You pay £78.41. And, and then every six months, you're going to receive 12 and a half pence. And that's your coupon, which is your income. So that's 0.25% split into two payments per year. Then on the maturity date in 2031, you receive your last coupon and your principal payment of 100. So all of this assumes that you hold to maturity. You don't sell in the interim, although that's always an option. So what's known here is your income, you know precisely when those coupons will be paid and you know how much you'll be paid as well. That'll generate 0.25% per year and your known capital gain is 2.9%. And that's because you bought at £78, it'll mature at £100. If we add those two things together, we're going to get an average income of about 3.15%. And that's called our yield to maturity. Now, what is yield to maturity? It's actually short for yield if you hold to maturity. And roughly, it's the sum of those two things. The capital gain or loss on the bond. If you buy it at less than 100, you get a capital gain. And if you buy it at more than 100, you get a capital loss. But whatever happens, you're going to generate a coupon income, which is always positive. Add the two together, and that's roughly your yield to maturity. So in the bond we just saw, we bought it for £78.41. In eight and a half years, we know when the bond matures, we'll get £100 back. And the percentage gain is 28%. And if we annualise that over that eight and a half year period, that's 2.9% per year. Our coupon income for this bond is 0.25%. We add the two and we get our yield to maturity, which is 3.15%. That's not exact, but it's a good approximation. Now, if you want to work out the yield to maturity exactly, there are lots of calculators online that let you do that. One of the best, I think, is from Wolfram Alpha, which is an amazing website. You should definitely check it out if you're into maths. But you enter all the details of the trade. So the settlement date is the day you buy the bond. The maturity date is 31st of July in 2031 for this bond. We'd also enter the price we pay today, the face value, which is 100, and the coupon, which is 0.25%. Now, the really detailed stuff would be the coupon frequency, which is 
twice per year for a UK gilt. And the day count convention for UK gilts is actual, actual. So we enter all of those details and out pops the answer from Wolfram Alpha, which is the annual yield. Now you can see that's very close to the 3.15, which we calculated previously. The more precise answer is about 3.13%. Now, a lot of people get upset by yield and say, why don't you just talk about price? The reason is that for different bonds with the same maturity, what you want to do is to be able to work out what yield they'll generate if you hold them to maturity. In other words, for comparison's sake, what's your rate of return? Now, for two bonds from the same issuer, in this case, the UK government, in the same currency, which is sterling, and the same maturity date, which is about eight and a half years for this bond, you'll always get roughly the same yield to maturity, even if the coupon's completely different. This graph from the FT shows the yield curve for the UK. Roughly, you can think of this as the interest rate which the government has to pay to investors if it borrows for different periods of time. If it borrows for six months, it would have to pay about 4%. And if it borrows for 30 years, it would currently have to pay about 3.5%. Now, usually this is an upward sloping curve. If you lend to the government for longer, it'll give you a higher rate of interest. At the moment, the yield curve's kind of weird because it has this kind of kink in it at the six-month point. So if you wanted to lock in this yield, you could buy a six-month government bond and know exactly what you're going to get. But for our eight-year bond, notice that it's very close to our calculated yield, which is 3.1%. So if you ever want to work out what your bond ladder is going to generate at various maturities for its bonds, just look at the yield curve, and it'll tell you the yield to maturity for your government's government bonds. Before we go on to look at the alternatives to bond ladders, but also the nitty-gritty of how to build one, let me just quickly mention our membership. And you can actually see one of the explainers which inspired this video beside me. It was called How to Build a Bond Ladder, and I went into quite a bit of detail into how to go about it. And we have over a hundred of these explainers now available as members-only content. Another benefit is if you want to learn more about this and speak to members of the community who have actually tried this, then you can do that on our Slack channel. Or if you want to follow up with questions with me, then you can also do that on Slack. But now that we have over 900 members, we have a huge collective knowledge, which you can tap by using our chat application. So if you do want to learn more about that and becoming a member, then just click on the link beside me or in the description beneath me. Now you're probably thinking, why go to all the trouble of buying single bonds? Why not just buy a bond fund? And the answer ultimately is about control. So beside me here, you can see one of the big bond funds in the United States. It's an exchange traded fund called SHY. Now this only buys US treasuries, but notice that it also only buys treasuries with a maturity of between one and three years. So if we plot the value of the bonds which it holds, and it has about $29 billion worth of bonds, you can see that there's a big white space between now and one year from now. And that's because there are no bonds which are allowed in the fund with a maturity of less than a year. But of course, as time progresses, what happens is that any of the bonds which are close to this one-year boundary fall out of the allowed range of maturities. And that means that the manager, iShares, has to sell that bond. It also has to take whatever price is currently in markets for that bond, and it can't hold the bond to maturity. So what it'll have to do is sell that bond and reinvest the money into a bond with greater than one year and less than three years to maturity. Another reason why the fund manager may have to buy or sell at a particular time is because money's flowing into the fund or out of the fund. Because this is an open-ended fund, it has to buy more bonds when money's flowing in, and it has to sell bonds if money's flowing out of the fund. So really, there's no control about the buying and selling of bonds inside this fund. Now, if the fund manager could simply hold all of the bonds to maturity, these are the cash flows which you would receive. Notice that we have lots of little cash flows here. These are the coupon payments on this $30 billion portfolio. And then the very large cash flows are the principal repayments as the bonds mature. But you'll never receive these cash flows. That's because all of these bonds will have to be sold as they cross this one-year boundary. And you also don't know what coupons you'll receive because it's continually churning the portfolio and buying new government bonds. So the only way to get rid of this asset, this SHY fund, is to sell it. 
you can't wait till the maturity date because there isn't one. And the price at which you sell is driven by the level of interest rates. So here I've shown the federal funds rate from the US central bank. And you can see that when it raises interest rates, the price of this fund will fall. And when it cuts interest rates, the price of the fund will rise. The very sharp rise in the federal funds rate recently has had a pretty dramatic effect on the price of the fund. Now with the bond ladder, the only price which you care about is the price at which you buy, because you know you can hold to maturity and lock in your yield. You have control of when you sell. But for a bond fund, you have no control whatsoever over the individual bonds in the fund. So the price is variable, and as the contents of the fund are churned through no choice of the fund manager, then you also get variable income. If interest rates are gradually rising, then the fund will be buying new bonds, which pick up a higher coupon. If bond yields are falling, then you get this effect, which is that the income gradually falls. But unlike a bond ladder, you don't know precisely how much you'll be paid because the contents of the portfolio are always changing. So what you're sacrificing with a bond fund compared to a bond ladder is certainty. How do we actually go about building a bond ladder? Well, in the US, you go to the Treasury Direct website, which would list all of the treasuries which you can buy. And you can actually buy them on that platform if you're a US taxpayer. In the UK, we've got the Debt Management Office website. And as part of the website, there's a report which shows you which bonds are currently available. So if you click on that Show Report button, you can download a spreadsheet or a PDF document which looks like this. So these are all of the gilts which you can buy. Notice how they're identified by their coupon and also their maturity date. You can get the precise maturity date here in the redemption date column. So this bond matures on the 31st of January 2023, this one on 22nd of July 2023. It also tells you when the coupons are paid for that bond. So this first one pays out on 31st of January and 31st of July. Now notice the list is organized by maturity date. So these are the ultra short bonds. These go out to 2025, the maturity dates. Then we get short term bonds, which go from 26 to 29. And then medium goes from 2030 onwards. Now, not all of these are available at all brokers. So you're going to have to talk to your investment platform and say, hey, I'd like to buy this bond, the 1 8th percent treasury gilt maturing in 2024. If you want to be really certain they're talking about the right bond, you can read out this ISIN code, which is a unique identifier for the bond. Is that bond available on your platform is the question you'd ask. Now, a lot of them will be available, but some might not. And your platform might not carry gilts at all. So before you set out to build a bond ladder, make sure your platform does offer gilts. So here are the simplified cash flows for a very simple bond ladder with just three bonds in it. We've got a one year bond in this top panel, two year bond in the middle panel and a three year bond in the bottom panel. So for the one year bond, you pay 100 today, you receive 100 back in a year's time and you receive a coupon which I think was 3% in this example. The two year bonds very similar, except you get four coupons, two per year, and you get your principal in two years time. And the three year bond, you get six coupons and your principal in three years time in 2026. If we add up those cash flows, this is what it looks like. Three big principal payments spaced one year apart. And oh, it looks a little bit like a ladder. These are kind of like the rungs on the ladder. And then interspersed between those principal payments, we get our coupons, which are much smaller than the principal repayments. So let's say that you knew that you had a big liability, a big expense in two years time. What you could do is put more money into this two year bond and that way the exact amount would be paid out in two years time and you'd be earning interest on that principal in the interim. You might also generate a capital gain on that payment if you buy it at below par. Below par just means less than 100. Now, of course, there's a lot of flexibility with this. It doesn't have to be three rungs. They don't have to be spaced one year apart. They don't even have to be government bonds. You can also buy different types of bonds. But this gives you an idea of how you construct one of these portfolios. Now, there is some maintenance required for a bond ladder. For example, you're going to be earning coupon income all the time and you might choose to reinvest that coupon. But the big payments are going to come into your account when you get one of those bonds maturing. You'll get a big principal repayment. Now, what people will usually choose to do is to reinvest it at the long end of the ladder. So let's say it's a three year ladder like we showed previously. 
After a year passes, the one-year bond will mature, the two-year will become a one-year, the three-year will become a two-year, so you could just reinvest the principal into a new three-year bond. And that way you'll always maintain a ladder and it'll steadily generate a stream of coupons. Alternatively, you could invest in something else. If equities fallen that year, maybe that would be a good opportunity to buy equities cheaply. Or perhaps you have an expenditure, maybe you want to spend the money. It's really up to you. So there's a huge amount of flexibility in a bond ladder, but the spacing of the rungs is what really sets the maintenance schedule if you are going to be reinvesting the principal. In conclusion then, bond ladders offer you a safe and steady income. Most of the time you'll probably choose to hold to maturity and not sell again because that's going to lock in your yield. If an opportunity does come along, say the price of a bond surges for whatever reason, you can always be tactical and sell that bond. But if you don't want to, you don't have to and you've got complete control over the purchases and sales. And for many people, the certainty is what they love about a bond ladder. You know precisely how much you're going to be paid, both in terms of coupon and principal. I'd say the drawbacks with a bond ladder is that it does require maintenance, so you will have to reinvest the principal as bonds mature, and you're going to have to learn about bonds. Of course, I love bonds, so that's not an issue, but I know that not everybody loves bonds quite as much as me. So I hope that's given you a bit of an introduction to bond ladders and why you might want to use them, but also how to build them. You can see it's very flexible. You can really do whatever you want with them. But if you do want a safe, predictable income, or you have liabilities and you know when they're gonna be timed, this could be a very useful way of managing your portfolio. So don't forget our offer. If you do want to join our membership and get access to all of those members only videos and Slack, you can do that by clicking on the link beside me and in the description beneath me. And as always, thank you for listening.